it's difficult not to notice the sheer volume of this pink flower along this riverbank. But it's actually not native to the United Kingdom. So where does it come from? What is it? And what can we do to manage it? Hi, I'm Dr. Zara Patterson. I've been researching alien plant species for over 15 years. And this is the notorious Himalayan balsam, also known as Impatiens glandulifera, its Latin name. This species is non-native to the United Kingdom and it comes from the Himalayas. It was brought over to the UK in around 1839 and brought over by plant hunters. Plant hunters were explorers that traveled the globe during the 1800s looking for exotic plant species to bring back to the UK. They were planted in large gardens and estates, but over time these plants escaped and have taken over much of the countryside. Himalayan balsam is often found along riverbanks where it does really well, but it can also be found along railway tracks and it's now encroaching into UK woodlands. Himalayan balsam is a very distinctive looking plant, one of the reasons why the plant hunters brought it over to the UK in the first place. It has these beautiful lobed flowers, which has given it its name of poor man's orchid and also policeman's helmet. It has really thin serrated leaves. The leaves are really fine to the touch. The stem is also hollow. This plant species is an annual. That means it will grow in spring, grow throughout the summer, set seed and die. So all within one year. Pretty impressive for a species that can grow up to two meters tall. It also has many seed pods. These are actually called ballistic seed pods because they can explode when touched and ready. These are the ripe seeds here, which are black. Each seed pod contains up to 10 to 15 seeds. And in total, plants have been estimated to have nearly 800 seeds per plant, which means that it is very good at reproducing. So why is Himalayan balsam a problem? Well, just look at how much space this plant is taking up. This space would be used by native plant species, but they struggle to compete with Himalayan balsam because it grows so fast and so dense that it leaves little space and light for native plants to thrive. Our native biodiversity is under threat from climate change, from habitat loss, pollution, and invasive alien species are an additional pressure to our native biodiversity. So what do we do about the Himalayan balsam problem? We need to manage it. Local communities often get together and carry out balsam bashing. This is a manual removal event of Himalayan balsam. Manual removal can be through pulling as well as brush cutting. The timing of removing Himalayan balsam is really important. You can't do it too early because it may reseed and regrow and you can't do it too late because then the seed pods will explode and you'll end up spreading the plant even further. Getting it at that sweet spot is really key. The time in between early growth and seed set and this means you'll have to monitor the site over the growing season so that when you do remove it, it's at the right time. There are a few methods to manage Himalayan balsam and which method you use will depend on the area that you're trying to manage. So hand pulling, for example, is really easy because the root system of Himalayan balsam is really shallow. Hand pulling means that it's targeted to just pulling out Himalayan balsam but it can be time consuming and often relies on groups of people to make it as effective as possible. The other option is brush cutting where you can strim really low to the ground. You can do that in a faster amount of time and you can cover normally a larger area, but you're likely to be cutting back other species as well. I mentioned Himalayan balsam has a short root system particularly compared to the native plants that it outcompetes. 
This is particularly important along riverbanks because shorter route systems mean riverbanks are more likely to become eroded, particularly during flooding. Research is still ongoing to find out which is the best method for managing Himalayan balsam along these riverbanks, particularly when you have to consider not damaging the native plants that are still living alongside it. So what's the best way of disposing of Himalayan balsam once you've removed it? It might be tempting to take this away from the site where you've done the management, but this might lead to balsam spreading further afield. One of the best things you can do is stack the balsam on top of itself. This will naturally compost. And also if you've managed it at the right time, it won't regrow. Reducing the amount of Himalayan balsam in our landscape is not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time, but when communities come together, this task becomes manageable and we can really start to make a difference. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the Woodlands TV channel for more content like this.